Hi everyone, it's Karen here introducing St Helens Online. It's great that you could join us this week. We're excited as we start looking at the Book of Acts together. Fran introduced our new sermon series last week called The Big Church Build. And this week, Al is preaching for us on the theme of building together the community of believers. And we look forward to that. We hope this autumn it will be a really special time of teaching and of learning together. And although we're not specifically asking for more testimonies following our summer series, of course, we're always really pleased when you come and say, can I give my testimony or tell a story of how God has been at work in my life? So if that's the case for you, do uh, come and let us know. Also in our service today, Fran will be leading our intercessions and Chloe is reading. So we still ourselves as we begin with an opening prayer. God of love and power, we set this time aside for you. Help us to lay aside our concerns and our cares to meet with you, to hear your voice and to be obedient to the things you're calling us to do in this new season. May we not miss out on the good things that you have for us, both as individuals and as a church. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we now continue with worship as we sing our opening song, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise.
This reading is taken from Acts 4, 32 to 37 and Acts 6, 1 to 4. All the believers were one in one heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of Lord Jesus and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there was no needy person among them for, for from time to time those who owned land or houses sold them brought the money from the sales and put, the, put it at the apostles feet and it was distributed to anyone who had need for it. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. In those days, when the number of the disciples were increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained that the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distributing of food, so the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on the table. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn to this responsibility over to them and give our attention to prayer and ministry of the word. When our children were younger and there was something to be shared out that couldn't be shared out very precisely, so let's say some pieces of fruit that were irregular shapes or a cake that needed to be cut or broken, what we would do is we'd say to one of them, look, you cut it up and then the second person, the other child, chooses their bit first. And that, to me, was a really good way of getting them to do it fairly because the person doing the cutting, if they made one piece bigger than the other, then they knew the second person would take the biggest piece. So it did make it fair. Now, it wasn't the best way of promoting sharing and it certainly wasn't promoting them uh, being generous because actually it worked equally well if they were both extremely greedy. But it did make it fair. Now, in these two short passages from Acts, we have a uh, story of community of believers first of all sharing everything in common with each other and then in the second part uh, something where that that goes wrong slightly and there's a one group complaining against another group within the, the larger group now when I read the first bit I, my thought is how what can I say for 10 minutes that's going to make a difference on this passage because I know that married couples might have separate bank accounts I don't, we have shared one with me and my wife, but um, I know some people do, and I'm not going to try and argue against that, and I'm certainly not going to spend 10 minutes trying to persuade you to open a joint account with me and the rest of the church. So, so what can we think about in this time that we have? Uh, well, certainly it can be about generosity, but I think for me, I just want to think, first of all, about the grace of God, which is mentioned in the first passage, and then integrity both personal integrity within a group and corporate or communal integrity. Now in chapter 4 of Acts, when it talks about them sharing everything they possess with each other, it says that God's grace was so powerfully at work among them that there were no needy persons among them. God's grace was so powerfully at work. Not just that God was gracious, but that that grace was powerfully at work in them. And... There's a story that Jesus tells about a servant who owed a lot to a king and the king let him off that debt. And yet immediately the servant went out and other people that owed him much lesser amounts, he asked them for the money and when they couldn't give it to him, then he would have them punished. Now, why did he do that? Well, I don't know, but a guess is that maybe he hadn't spent long enough in the throne room or the presence of the king. He hadn't let it sink in that, that grace that had been shown to him. He hadn't let it sink into his bones. 
Instead, he just sort of rushed out of the presence of the king and gone after his own ends. I can remember uh, when my dad died, and it was very sudden. He had a heart attack, and he died at a friend's house. I wasn't there, but I went shortly afterwards. And uh, when I was there, my overwhelming desire was to say thank you to him. <laughs> Not that he could hear me necessarily, but that was my desire. I just wanted to say thank you for all that you've done for me. I was just felt incredibly grateful. Now, I hadn't always felt that way about my dad. When I was a teenager, quite frankly, I was fed up with him. He got on my nerves. I'm sure I got on his nerves too, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure then that I was quite so aware of what he'd done for me. Obviously, he'd done a lot for me up to that point, but at that point in my life, I wasn't quite aware of it. Now, when he died, I was late 40s and a parent myself, so you start to realise some of the difficulties of being a parent and um, maybe reflect differently on what the things my dad had said to me and, and done and some of the decisions he'd, decisions he'd made. Not that he was a perfect person or a perfect dad, but he'd done what he'd done because he loved me and I was grateful. So feeling that gratitude promotes gratitude. Experiencing God's grace and letting it sink into you promotes generosity and makes us more people of grace so that our natural desire is to be more gracious. For us to build up a community of believers we need to experience and let God's grace work powerfully within us so that our desire like God's can be to be gracious to others, to be generous to others. So if we understand something of the grace of God and then we experience that working powerfully within us. For me, the next thing these passages speak about is personal integrity. Uh, integrity being, in very simple terms, doing the right thing even when no one's looking. Doing the right thing when you don't actually have to at that moment. Nobody would know, at least for the time being. So doing the right thing not just because people are watching but when no one's watching and um, the Bible talk, talks about integrity all the way through it the word might not be in it very much but the description of it is so a few passages are the Lord detests lying lips but delights in people who are trustworthy man looks on the outside but God looks on the heart God is light and in him, in him there is no darkness at all and do to others as you would have them do to you. Uh, in a community where we are sharing with each other, we want to know that other people are being generous too. So we can last for a while on goodwill, but after after a while, if we if we get suspicious that some people aren't pulling their weight in terms of being generous, in terms of sharing what they can afford to share, then that maybe starts to make us bitter, and um, things gradually can go downhill. So we have to be able to trust that if we're sharing, that other people are doing that equally, that they're doing the right thing, even when we can't see it. The trouble is, especially in the Christian community, we're told not to brag about what we give, about being generous. So if we're trying to be quietly generous, then people won't see us being generous, and then they might start to think we're not being generous at all. So it's... A, a bit of a tricky situation but we can't always tell just by looking what people's motives are um, if you see, saw a petrol queue at a, petro, a queue of cars at a petrol station um, in the last few days or weeks not long after a, a news article about possible shortages it's very easy to make a quick judgment about everybody in that queue but actually we don't know what each person's motivation is there may be some people in the queue with just a few miles of petrol left in the car who have to get to work the next morning, and they're worried about that. There may be other people in the queue who have three quarters of a tank, and actually that would last them the week and maybe a bit longer, but they decide to fill up anyway, because they can. There's no law against it, so why shouldn't they? So people have different motivations, and we can't always see what those motivations are. But for us as Christians, to build up our Christian community, the community of believers, we have to not just think about ourselves, but think about other people and how 
our actions impact upon those not just in terms of sharing giving money and that kind of thing but it may be sharing other things that we have um, time or particular talents that we have or just conversations or smiles with people um, thinking about how we can contribute to this group and how we can contribute sometimes in ways where people won't even see that contribution but we do it anyway because it's the right thing to do now over time problems will arise within communities um, in Acts 6 we hear about the Greek G Jews complaining that the widows are overlooked and complaining to the Hebraic Jews so within the same community but from different backgrounds one group was complaining about the actions of another um, and it was at some point brought out into the open and then a plan was put in place to deal with it now we all make mistakes mistakes okay I knew a person who used to say quite a lot you only stub your toe when you're moving and I like that phrase because I know that for me I sometimes get a little bit irritated when I see something that needs doing so I'll start to do it but then when I start to do it if it's something I've not done before I'll make mistakes and then instead of people saying oh thanks for taking that on you get people complaining because you've made the mistakes not that I'm bitter or anything but um, we only stub our toe when we're moving it's better to move and to stub your toe than to sit and not do anything and take no action so it's good to do things and actually making mistakes is something that we all do we, we are human and we will always continue to make mistakes but hopefully we can learn from those and we can move on from them however irritating they might be and in the community we will make mistakes even if we're trying to do the right thing if we're trying to have personal integrity if we're trying to make plans that will help sometimes just by oversight or not quite thinking things through or whatever it may be things will happen that aren't good and at that point we have to address them and of course on a worse case scenario there are times of course when people abuse their power or their position to abuse other people and again it must be brought out into the open we must never ever think we need to hide it to save face that's not integrity that's not of God God is light and in him there is no darkness at all so let's think on God's grace let's think on what he's done for us already let's try and think of things that we haven't thought of that he's done for us because there will be lots of those things as well and then with that in our minds and our hearts let's do our best to be generous to be people of integrity to be people who do the right thing when there's no immediate need to when there's nobody watching us but we do the right thing anyway let's move let's do things let's stub our toes in the process and hopefully learn from it and where there are mistakes let's bring them out into the open whether it's ours or somebody else's in a way that we can deal with them gently and learn from them and move on and let's try and build each other up as we do all of these things you will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you trust in the Lord forever for the Lord is the rock eternal as we think today of our community living and working together building up after the pandemic, imitating the early disciples in prayer, worship and teaching, we pray for some specific areas of pastoral need. Today is Safeguarding Sunday, when we remember the vital work of safeguarding the vulnerable in our churches, giving thanks for all those who work to make churches safer for all. We thank you, Lord, for Angela, our safeguarding lead, Give her strength and energy in this vital role. And a special prayer for this Sunday. Loving Father God, we come to you in the knowledge that you hold all your children in unconditional love. We lift to you those who are vulnerable and in need of protection. Give them your safety, comfort and peace. We cry to you for those who are hurting and whose trust has been broken. Give them your healing, restoration and justice. We bring to you those who seek to forgive others who have hurt them. 
Give them your strength, courage and hope. For those who by their actions or attitudes have caused hurt and harm to others, lead them to seek your forgiveness and to enter into true repentance. Thank you for all who give their time, knowledge and skills to make our community safer. Give them your wisdom, guidance and grace. For ourselves, we ask you to give us your heart for the vulnerable, the oppressed, the voiceless and the forgotten. Help us to see them as you see them, to value them as you value them and to nurture and protect them as you desire. Help each one of us play our part in creating safer places for all your people. In your name we pray. Amen. We also pray today for the search for a new vicar for our parish, praying for all those who will be involved in shortlisting, interviewing and selection of the new person. We pray as the advert goes out, Lord, that you are calling those people you want to see here in Stapleford, filling them with your Holy Spirit and equipping them for the task ahead. In your name we pray. We pray for individuals struggling at the moment from our church family, those who are unwell or sad or lonely, for those struggling with the after effects of the coronavirus and for those struggling with long term conditions. We pray for their healing and for their peace and in your name we pray. We also pray today for our world for the suffering, the pain and the inequalities that are in the wonderful world which you, Lord, have made. We think ahead and pray for the COP26 climate change conference in Glasgow, asking God to direct thought and deed in the search for solutions to climate change. God of life, we praise you for the beauty of creation, its richness and variety, we're sorry when we misuse it and squander its resources. Make us more like Jesus, treading gently on your common home and breathe your spirit on us that we may care more deeply for your earth and for each other. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is the rock eternal. Amen. So I'd like to thank everyone today who's taken part in our worship and especially Al for your message. I wonder, a challenge, can you all think of one thing that you will take away with you and try and put into practice from Al's message to us? And now an advance notice, something to get in your diaries or on your calendar. Uh, There's really good news that we will have a Christmas edition of Inspire, our great community newspaper. And so that it gets into the homes of everyone in our parish, we do need some help from you. Could you spare just one hour? to be a distributor during the last week in November. It just takes an hour or so of your time for this magazine to get into the hands through the letterboxes of those who would like to read about our church activities and to make a connection with them. So if you can help, please contact Steve via the church office. Also, we just need a, a team of 10 people, so no need to all shout at once on that. But on the morning of Friday, the 19th of November, we're going to have that team of sorters and bundlers. And uh, if you can help with that, again, contact either Steve or myself to let us know. And we're also asking that everyone in particular at this time holds the whole process of selecting our new vicar very much in their prayers as the adverts have now gone out. 
and uh, in a week or two the process of shortlisting will begin. But now we come to our closing song of worship, worthy of every song. And a closing prayer. Lord, would you send us out into your world to love and to serve our neighbours and to look out for all who are in need. Build us up as your church here in Stapleford. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you 
for those whom you love and those for whom you pray, this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.